a river people welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in in today's video we are going to be going over an easy pre-spawn pattern that i hope you can put to work on your river to catch bigger and more smallmouth this spring so when i do these breakdown videos i just want to point out that i am trying to provide short digestible lessons that serve as reminders for us as we move from one stage of the fishing season to another so in no way do i think these are groundbreaking in any way i just think they are important lessons that we need to keep in the back of our mind in order to catch more smallmouth in the river so to provide a little more context for this video this was my first trip up north to wisconsin this spring and the water had experienced about a 20 degree warm up over the course of about a week and a half to two weeks and this was really the first time that it warmed up significantly so we were not exactly sure if the fish were still going to be in their winter holes or if they were going to have already moved up into the current in the river and studies in the mississippi river and studies on the wisconsin river they both show that smallmouth will migrate miles between their winter habitat and their spawning habitat so we knew there could be some movement involved but we wanted to first eliminate the winter hole water so that we could be sure fish were going to be around up in the river and as much as we were hoping to smash a bunch of fish still hanging around their winter holes it just wasn't the case i think the warm-up really pushed fish out of that so we had to go looking in the river after catching a few small fish around the winter holes and fishing the likely spots we just weren't getting the action so we had to go on the move and start searching for fish but this is where we ran into a classic pre-spawn pattern that i'm going to talk in more detail about once we get to it so let's go ahead and dive into the fishing All right, I don't want to ruin the surprise, but spoiler alert, I'm going to catch a fish here. I'm going to give you guys a little look at what we're dealing with in this section of the river, and then I want you to make a choice. Am I going to catch this fish in A, B, or C? Because this is going to be the dominant pattern for the rest of the day. And keep in mind, this river is actually probably four to five feet over normal level, so that really plays a role in where the fish were setting up. But make your choice, and let's see what happens. go they're in the river <laughs> that's a pretty good one maybe a 15 16 er made the move from the flowage up to the current and found that one on a current seam behind a log good sign the sleeper strikes again. <laughs> As you guys have seen, C was the correct answer. The fish were setting up on a secondary current seam, and this has a lot to do with the water levels, especially in the spring. We all know that the rivers can get way out of control. This one wasn't quite there, but it was still very high, so that main channel current seam just was too heavy for the fish. They weren't feeding there, but they were pushing off towards some sort of obstruction or current break and hanging out on those secondary current seams. And this was gonna be the pattern that we could return to throughout the day and pick up multiple fish. Good drop off here too. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Football. Jeff on the board here. First big of the day, current seam. This did not exist the last time we were here. So if we look over to the left there and straight ahead, that was not an island. This was not here. That's how high the water is. And Jeff with a nice, it's a solid 18, I think. 
All right, so as we moved upriver, Jeff found this fish on another secondary current seam in an area that had water that normally would not be there when the river was at normal level. And the land actually further upstream was creating a current seam on the main channel, and then further back we had a secondary current seam closer to where we were. And if we pay closer attention to the water, we can actually see an underwater obstruction right around where the kayak is as well. This ended up being a spot that taught me at least an important lesson for this time of year. As fish are migrating up a river or moving throughout a river, there are going to be spots that they pull up on and hold on on their journey. And so this means that there are going to be multiple fish pulling up and stopping there, feeding, doing whatever it is before they move on. So if you find one of these areas, it's worth pulling up to it multiple times throughout the day because there's a good chance that you can catch multiple fish off of just one spot. And actually, if you come back days afterwards and it's roughly the same condition, same time of year, then you're probably going to be able to pick up even more fish off just that one spot. Now, it's not going to exist forever, but during this time of year, if the water levels up, look for those secondary seams and return to them. another giant won't you? I hope. Well maybe not another but something bigger. I think I got one. It's a miracle. Yes. How do you do? Oh, it just came up. Well, looks like uh, flipping you. Please don't come off. There we go. Should go 18. It's just dragging the dark sleeper along the same line that Jeff caught his on. Coming back down because we can't fish this dang river that's flowing so hard. Hard to find good fish holding spots, but it's a thick one. Atta boy. the little spot. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure from the first time we were here. Oh yeah, I believe you. Seventeen something. That's a nice one. Oh, I think he's hung up in my drive or something on my anchor line. Had to get some surgical tools out to finish that catch. There's a 
There's some brush right here. 17 even. Is there? After returning to that spot, obviously we picked up four extra fish and missed one. So we decided we were going to go ahead and head downstream, hit the same spots that we hit earlier in the day that we had some bites on and see what happened there to see if we could continue on with the secondary seams and pick up fish that were using them as little stops as they moved up the river. Another one. Same spot. Third jerkbait fish. Keep it going. A little 16 and 3 quarters on a jerkbait. Almost identical spot to the first one I caught up in the river. I think this one's a little better. About the same size, but that. Another one. Two in a row, baby. All right, guys, so with this last fish, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope this has been a helpful reminder to return to those productive seams, especially secondary seams in high water levels, so that you can put an easy pattern to work for you in the pre-spawn and catch more fish.